Uh, it is May 4th, 2011. This is the webinar on vectors. Uh, thank you all for coming to see our webinars. Uh, I have to say thank you in general for the continuing, uh, continuing interest in these webinars. Uh, it's something we're trying to improve uh, every time we do them. So uh, again, if there's comments, suggestions, or anything else, uh, please let us know. You can email us at support at unitronics.com. Uh, on future webinars, we will be scheduling one on troubleshooting and debugging. Uh, if you have any requests on something you'd like to see or uh, recommendations that we can go over, uh, we'd like to do a little little session on a, a couple tips that either you, you have found helpful or if you have a problem you'd like to see, please again send us an email at support at unitronics.com and maybe put webinar in the subject and just let us know uh, what else you'd like to see there. Um, also, check out our forum uh, where we have a blog that has continually, uh, we've been updating this page uh, with all the, the previous webinars. So you can go to www.unitronics.com slash webinars uh, as a quick link to here. Um, okay, now that, that stuff's out of the way. Uh, we're going to be working with Visilogic, of course, and a V570. And we're going to run an example we have here for vectors. Now, to start off, what is a vector? Uh, we define a vector as a start address with some length. So if I say a vector at MI10 with length 5, I'm specifically talking about memory integer 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Now we have a number of tools that help us work with vectors, um, but let's, let's talk again about what is a vector. A vector is a collection of information. Uh, instead of having five integers randomly strewn about the controller, we've organized our information into five vectors, five pieces of information in a row. Uh, maybe they're sequential, maybe they're, they are random, maybe it's pressure or temperature that we're, uh, we've been logging, maybe it's an IP address, for example, our indirect IP function uses a vector of four memory integers to store each octet. There's a number of functions that work with vectors. Uh, so we're going to look at some simple tools that use vectors here. And hopefully, we'll be able to uh, put together some other interesting ideas from this. Uh, so let's take a look at our first function. Again, if we click Invisilogic on vector, we can see all our tools here. Uh, I should mention that we're going to be working in Visilogic without the HMI. We're going to use the Memory tab and the Watches tab and the Online Test Mode to see what the controller is doing. Uh, so aside from vectors specifically, one interesting thing we can get out of this uh, webinar is working in Visilogic online with the controller. Okay. So let's look at our first function. Uh, the vector fill, again, we can find it here under Fill, will store a value into a set length or indirect length of registers. Uh, I'm going to go online here. Okay, and we can see below in my memory area, I have a little workspace set out. Uh, this first entry is MI0 with a length of 10. If you've never used this before, it's very easy. Let me just come out of the online mode. We can right click and select add row. And we can link to some integer. Again, it's, since it's a vector, we'll say the start of the vector. We'll say, in this case, 15, and hit OK. And we can define a length, 5. So we've defined a workspace that's going to show us memory integer 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Uh, we also have the option of looking at 8, 16, or 32-bit. Uh, for working with double words, we can use 32, memory integer 16. We can also display it as an ASCII, binary, hex, or decimal. Uh, so this is all uh, very useful, but we're going to work with these predefined ones we have here today. Uh, so let me go back online. Again, vector fill is going to store some value into a length of memory integers. Uh, if we take a look at this function, we've defined our constant of 0. So we're going to store the value 0. The start address for this vector is MI0, and the length is 10. So we've defined when we run this function to store 0 
in all of the registers. This is very useful for initializing or clearing out a section or a chunk of information. Uh, if we want to use uh, a workspace uh, in a vector, and every time we start a new process or function, if we want to clear it out or initialize it, we can use a vector fill. Uh, one thing I should mention here, we can do it, if we click, we can see our available uh, operand types. If we're using memory bits or binaries, it's a little different than if we're using, oops, I'm sorry, our other uh, operand types. So we can use the vector fill for all of our operand types. We just have to predefine which one we're using. So specifically, I'm showing that this one, uh, we've selected bits, and we can use memory bits. And this one, we're using our other registers, and we can work with these. Okay. So I've set up a little space where I have at MI1000 some information. Uh, I have a vector at MI1000 to 1009 of memory integers in a row, and I can show you these. Let me go to our operands, and we'll just do a quick go to 1000. So I have sample data from MI1000 to 109, uh, numbered sequentially, 1 through 10, and I have sample data from MI110, I'm sorry, 1010 to 1019, which is random. Uh, you see it starts at 5, 2, 8, 6, 1, 9, 3, 7, 4, 10. Okay. We're going to use a vector copy tool. What the vector copy tool it does is it allows us to copy a length of information. So if I say, in this case, our start of vector is MI1000, our destination is MI0 with length of 10, we're going to copy all 10 of those memory integers. I'm sorry, slow down. Okay. We're going to copy with this vector copy from the start address which in this case, again, is MI1000, to the destination, in this case, MI0, with some length. So this is the vector length, and we've defined it as 10. Yeah. If I go back to my memory setup, I'll just make this a little bigger, and we run this function block. When I hit set, we've copied from MI1000 with length of 10 to MI0. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If we want to see our vector fill work, we can erase this. Okay, we've written zeros to all these. Let's put that vector back here. Okay. So, the next function block we have, the same vector copy tool, but we've defined a different space. We're now going to copy MI1010, which was the data in random order, to MI0 with, again, a length of 10. So if I click on MB2 and we set this, we see that we've moved the random data. Okay. So all we've done so far is we've defined what a vector is, and we've talked about two tools the vector fill, which will store some value in some length, and we've used the vector copy. Now, if you're used to using a store direct, you can imagine that we can use 10 store directs, or we can use this vector copy. Uh, again, because it's a vector, we've defined that it's all in the same row. So we can use our criteria of the start address and a length to define the location of all this information. Okay. Now that we have our data in some location. Let's look at some tools we can work with. We have <clears throat> a vector sort function. The information that we give this function, we can double click here. Again, vector sort. The information we define here is our start address, MI0, which is our workspace, and the length is 10. And we can decide if we want to sort up or sort down. And the resultant location is going to be MI10. Again, this is not simply MI10. It's MI10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So again, the length defined here is also what we're going to copy to the destination. So here's our MI0. Here's our MI10. Notice I've initialized it, and it's set to zeros right now. 
free set MB3. We've copied and sorted the information from MI0 to MI10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this was the up option. We can also sort down. Notice we now have the data in descending order. This is in interesting and useful uh, if we think about temperature data and we want to sort our information from highest to lowest, either temperature or pressure or even part count. Any, any information you have that you've been logging or collecting, we can use to sort. Okay. If you look at our next function, we have a vector compare. So we've set this up to compare MI0 to MI10 with a length of 10. Our outputs here are MB5 and MI20. You can see we put MB5 down in this workspace. So what we're comparing is this vector to this vector. If they're the same, we should expect that MB5 will be high and our MI20 will hold the value of negative 1. If they're different, our MI20 will hold the location of the first value that is not the same. So you notice it's 0 because we have 5 and 10. If we had 5 and 5 and 2 and 2 and then we'll say 2 and 9, we would hold the value of the first position where the information is not the same. So it gives us another little bit of information. If they're all the same, the value is negative 1. So we can use either our MB5 as a compare and see if the vectors are the same, or we can use a compare to the memory integer. If it's greater than negative 1 or 0 or above, then we know the vector is different. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I'm going to copy some information again. Let's copy from the vector copy information in order. And let's use our sort. Oops, go that a little further. Okay, so we have the same string now. We notice MB5 is high. MI20 is negative 1. So again, we can say if MB5 is high or if MI20 is less than 0, our vectors match. We can hit the sort again, and this time we're sorting descending. MB5 is low, and MI20 is 0, because the first positions do not match. Okay. Along with these functions, we have a min and a max. So if we're looking at, again, the workspace MI0 with a length of 10, MI21 is going to store the maximum value. Uh, we should expect this to be 10. I said MB6. Okay, and the value is 10. And if we use the min, we can set this. The value is 1. So if we've been collecting temperature data and we want to sort, we can use the sort functions. If we want to get the min and max values, uh, we can do that with these functions. Okay. Let's take a look now at a simple data table uh, example. We've set up our system bit 13, which is the rising edge of system bit 3, our one second pulse. So every one second, we're going to add 373 to MI23 and save it in MI23. Now this is a simple uh, data uh, generator. It's just giving us some information to use. 